Welcome back to the FM Scout YouTube channel. My name's FM Llama, and in this brand new series, we're going to try and inspire your next football manager adventure by having a look at some of the sleeping giants of world football that you could take charge of. And we're going to start today by looking at some clubs playing outside of the top division in their nation that have won a European trophy. Before we take a look at those clubs, make sure you subscribe to the FM Scout YouTube channel and hit that bell for notifications when new videos become available. And if you're interested in more FM22 save ideas, well, on my channel, you'll find guides to the different countries that you can load in Football Manager, as well as a whole series with further save ideas that might just inspire you. But without further ado, let's check out our first fallen European giants. For our first sleeping giant, we head to England and Nottingham Forest, a club that won the English Championship in 1978, having only been promoted the season before. They then went on to win the European Cup in 1979, even winning it back to back the following year. Under legendary coach Brian Clough, they won the UEFA Super Cup in 1979, defeating Barcelona, giving them a total of three European trophies. So we'll find Nottingham Forest playing in the English Championship. That's the second tier of English football if we start with the facilities. While for the stadium, you've got the city ground, which holds a shade over 30,000 spectators. That's probably big enough to support a club with Premier League ambitions. We have a look at their other facilities. We've got good training facilities, good youth facilities, but only adequate academy coaching and adequate youth recruitment as well. So in terms of the finances, you're going to need some money to improve those facilities. Maybe that will have to wait until you've taken the club in to the Premier League. because The finances are quite tight. You're going to start the game with £15 million in the bank, but only two and a half million of that available to spend on transfers. The wage budget is also incredibly tight as well. You are under it. The wage budget is £341,000 a week. You've got about £3,000 spare to go out and sign players with. It could well be a case at Nottingham Forest of having to sell players before you're in a position to buy. But what positions do you need to strengthen? Let's take a look at the squad. So the first thing you'll notice about the Nottingham Forest squad is they've already got plenty of players in on loan. The highest valued of them is James Garner on loan from Manchester United, valued at over £15 million and play as a central midfielder or as a defensive midfielder. You've got some ageing players in this squad as well. Your lead striker is going to be Lewis Graben, who scored plenty of goals for Forrest over the last few seasons, but he's going to be turning 34 during this current campaign. So within a season or two, you're going to be looking at trying to buy a new number nine. You've got plenty of other players in on loan from other clubs, including Philip Zinkenagel on loan from Watford, a wide player or an attacking midfielder, valued at £6 million plus. There's not a lot of money to spend in order to strengthen that team. Let's have a look at how good this squad is compared to others in the division. So you'll see that the Nottingham Forest squad is quite highly rated, fifth favourites to win the title this season. Only the three teams that came down from the Premier League last season, plus Bournemouth, are ranked more highly than them. So there's a good chance that you could secure a playoff position inside your first season. Let's close out our look at Nottingham Forest by having a look at the history of this sleeping giant. So Forest are somewhat of an oddity in that they've won the European Cup or the Champions League more than they've won England's top division. They've got two European Cups. They've won the English top division once. A trophy that Brian Clough was never able to win whilst he was in charge was the FA Cup. But they won that twice, once in 1898 and again in 1959. And they've also got a good record in England's other Premier Cup competition, the League Cup that they've won four times in a spell of just 12 or 13 years. So Nottingham Forest are clearly a massive club in England that have been away from the Premier League for far too long. You could be the coach to return them to the top tier of English football. If we head over to Italy, we'll find another worthy contender for the title of European Sleeping Giants. For an Italian Sleeping Giant, we head to Parma, a club that won the Coppa Italia in 1992 before embarking on European campaigns that saw them win the Cup Winners' Cup in 1993 
as well as two UEFA Cups, the first in 1995 and the second in 1999, giving Palmer a haul of four European trophies in total. So we're staying with second tier clubs, but this time we're hopping from England to Italy, where we will find Palmer relegated from Serie A last season. Now playing their trade in Serie B. They've got a 22,000 stadium, one that will appeal to those that were fans of Italian football back in the 90s. And we have a look at their facilities. This time we've got excellent training facilities, but only average youth facilities, adequate academy coaching and adequate youth recruitment. So in terms of training the first team, you're in good shape. But when it comes to bringing through your own academy products, well, some money needs spending on those facilities. Let's check out whether they've got the finances to do it. The answer is not really. A shade over 10 million in the bank, just under 4 million to spend on transfers. A little bit of wriggle room when it comes to the wage budget. But in terms of having enough money to improve the infrastructure of the club, well, that's something that might need to wait until you've taken Palmer back into Serie A. Let's check out whether you've got a squad that's capable of making that happen. So there's a couple of things you notice about the Palmer squad as soon as you take over. Firstly, it's an ageing squad with names like Gianluigi Buffon playing between the sticks at the ripe old age of 43. He's not the only older player on the books as well. Danilo is 37 years old. The next thing that you notice is that some of their more highly valued players are out on loan at other clubs. Giuseppe Pazella is on loan at Atalanta. He's valued at anywhere up to 9 million and looks like he would be your first choice left back. And a couple of your midfielders are also out on loan as well. And again, they look like players that might have been able to break into the starting 11 were they at the club. However, that doesn't mean that there's not some value in this squad. You've got players like Dennis Mann that are valued at between 12 and 14 and a half million that are available to represent Palmer this season. Let's have a look where that leaves them in terms of their odds for the title. And you can see that if you are to take over at Palmer, the pressure is on from the outset. They are 1 to 91 on to win the Serie B title. So nothing short of promotion back to Serie A is going to be good enough at this club. It's pretty understandable when you check out the history of this great team. So Palmer really are the proverbial cup team. They've got one Cup Winners Cup, one European Super Cup, two UEFA Cups, and three Coppa Italias as well. What's missing from their trophy cabinet? Well, certainly a Serie A Scudetto and no Champions League honours as well. So the task is clear if you're going to take on the challenge of this sleeping giant return to Serie A Try and win them their first Scudetto. Try and take them to Champions League glory. That's a big ask, but maybe not as long a road to recovery as for our final sleeping giants. A club that have fallen even further down their pyramid is Magdeburg. The club that won the East German Cup in 1973 went on to defeat AC Milan in the Cup Winners' Cup the following season. They remain the only club from the former East Germany that have ever won a European competition, but they now find themselves languishing far down the football pyramid in Germany. So what level do we find Magdeburg playing at now? Well, not in the Bundesliga or Bundesliga 2, but down in the third tier of German football. In terms of their facilities, they've got a 28,000 capacity ground. Their other facilities are not too bad for this level either. They've got average training facilities, average youth facilities, average academy coaching, and adequate recruitment, certainly not the worst in terms of the clubs competing at this level. Let's check out how the finances are. Have you got the money to start reshaping this squad? I'm afraid not. There's £3.8 million in the bank, but none of that is available for transfers. There's a little bit of a surplus in the wage budget, but you're going to be looking at free transfers if you're going to start reshaping this squad. Let's have a look at the kind of talent that you're already going to have at your disposal, given that you won't be able to spend too much rebuilding your team. When going through the Magdeburg squad, one of the things you'll notice is that we are not looking at players of anywhere near the value that we were looking at at either Palmer or Nottingham Forest. One of their most highly rated players is Corbinian Berger, rated between £8,000 and £16,000 and paid less than £1,000 a week. There is some young talent, though, players who are 
only 20 years old that are valued as highly as £300,000 and look like they could be good prospects for the future. As we move forward through the team, there are other prospects as well. Andreas Muller looks like another player that could be pivotal to your chances of achieving things with Magdeborg. Maybe we should check out just how highly fancied they are to go up this season. Perhaps this is a sleeping giant challenge that comes with less pressure to achieve immediate results. Only a ninth place prediction for Magdeborg. Odds of 10 to 1 mean that you might be given a little bit more time before you have to take them to promotion. But once that feat is achieved, the goal if you're to take on this challenge is to get all the way to the Bundesliga. Try to win Magdeborg, their first German trophy. Remember, they won plenty in East German football. But the real prize is to take them back into European competition. Could you win them a Europa League? Could you even qualify them for the group stages of the Champions League? Who knows? Could you turn Magdeburg into Germany's most feared outfit and take them all the way to Champions League glory? So that concludes our look at the first three sleeping giants you can take charge of in FM22. Don't forget to subscribe to the FM Scout channel and hit the bell for notifications because more sleeping giant videos are coming up soon.